Good morning, folks. We've got big studies in catastrophism today. We're also going over some visuals provided by the science community, the Oregon Earthquake Swarm, and we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun was very quiet. We've got calm solar wind, no major coronal holes, and the eruptive activity is meeting that lower level even in the plasma filaments. For a comparison, this is today's sun in dimmed 131 angstroms to show that there are no active regions making X-ray flares. Compare that to this, back at the end of October when the sun had multiple flaring active regions. Indeed, all is calm by comparison today. Looking off the coast of Oregon, we have a sharp wag of the finger and then some good news. First, for people pointing out the names of the individual faults within the overall Cascadia danger zone, they don't seem to realize that they are all interconnected and that it is well established that one earthquake can trigger another up to a thousand miles away. Jabbering about the name of the individual fault within the Cascadia region is literally inane. However, the number of magnitude 5 events has slowed, and yesterday, the top marks we were able to show were 5.8 and 5.5, so we're lower in magnitude as well. We're keeping eyes on that today. Up next, we're out with the ESO, zooming in on a massive star, one that also has a massive planet in orbit. Despite the incredible power of the star, they say the planet is surviving because of its size and the fact that it orbits 10 times further away than Jupiter orbits our sun. Up next, it's a simulation visual produced in anticipation of the launch of the James Webb Telescope, and hopefully their models are wrong. Otherwise, it would appear snowflakes are out there too, polluting and sissifying the entire cosmos. At least our galaxies will know which pronoun they're going to use that week. Up next, the excellent breakdown at macro and micro scales here of heliobiological parameters relating to human health. We've seen everything from cardiac to autoimmune to psychological and cognitive issues, and this review is a good look at the field. Up next, the first official detection of molecular hydrogen in the galactic nuclear wind. This is critical because that hydrogen needs to be there if the models are correct. The galactic wind is the electric medium through which the galactic current sheet flows, and again, I was starting to worry they weren't going to find that required component of the system. Up next, a look at the 15 to 70,000 years ago range for paleomagnetic events, and they catch three of the four geomagnetic excursions in that range. They've got Greenland, Lachamp, and Mono Lake, even if their dates are slightly off like every other paleo-intensity study, and they also confirm the extreme severity of Lachamp compared to the others. Jumping from past disasters to the next cycle event ongoing now, it turns out that the weakening magnetic field of our planet has begun to allow enough particle penetration advancement in the South Atlantic anomaly that it is easily seen that particles are crashing down an extra 4.3 kilometers every year at this point as Earth prepares to throw its inhabitants into that gauntlet it sets up every 12,000 years. How about this, folks? It took most of a year. Numerous delays or outright shutdowns of process, but the machines are arriving at Observer Ranch to begin the big work. If you don't know about it, check out ObserverRanch.com. It's got all the details and folks. While our physical shipping is closed for the holidays, you can not only get both of our textbook PDFs, but this month is the last month to donate to the Observer Ranch project. Get your name memorialized on the wall of the observers at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.